Hey guys, John here. Today we're going to dive into Citrus a little bit and we're going to go over a Heavenly Pluck sound I have designed not too long ago. So without further ado, here's how it sounds. So yeah, that's essentially what this patch is. It does have a lot of reverb, so it's maybe more for an ambient, slower type of song, or you can dial down the reverb back to your taste to fit whatever it is you're working on. So without further ado, let's jump right into this. So let's get a new citrus going, and let's route this to an empty channel. You can either drag here to whatever mixer channel you want, or you can press Control L and it'll link it to the next available one. So let's rename this Heavenly Pluck. All right, so let's bring this down, maybe seven, something like that. And let's switch this to a default patch. Okay, I wanna make this screen a little bigger in case you have a small screen or you'd like to see this better. So first things first, I'm gonna drag this down by 12 semitones or one octave. And let's jump right into the operator one tab. So first things first, this 2.0 is fine. You can leave it here, it's totally cool. We're just going to have a low pitch sine wave because we changed that pitch there. Now, with this one, let's see what we got first. Oh, yeah, we're going to dive into the harmonic editor for this one. So, right click the sine wave and click this bottom option here, convert shape to sine harmonics. Now, this is not really any harmonics. It's just a sine wave. This is your only fundamental. And if you're not familiar with the screen, below this line is the phase of the, of the sine wave. And above it is the magnitude or amplitude, whatever you want to call it, more intense, less intense, volume. So let's get into this. Hold control and zoom, and let's get a little closer look at this. So we'll have our first one here all the way at the very top. And the second one's going to be a harmonic four. And you can always see in the hint bar up here which harmonic you're on. So let's go over to four, and let's left click, and let's make the harmonic four about 51% right there. And you can see how it already changes the waveform. Next harmonic up, we're going to do harmonic 7. And I believe right here, harmonic 7. And we'll put that at about 44% right there. And next up, we have harmonic 15. And all the way down here, left click inside here. And 15 is going to be about 41% right there. And harmonic 17 is going to be about 22%, right about there. And harmonic 18 is gonna be 12%. So it kind of cascades as it goes. So this is essentially the waveform that we're mainly gonna be using. And I'll drag all these, all these down here. It's essentially at the same position since it's all the way around, but I kind of like those bars there because I know if I designed it myself or I know what I'm looking at, kind of it's a little easier on the eye. All right, so we have this done here, and we're going to leave the most part of this we're going to leave alone, except we're going to get this noise oscillator and bring that up. Let's see, I think it's like 79% or something like that. Yeah, let's bring this up all the way here, and then we're going to select this pluck. And already you'll notice it kind of kind of almost sounds like an acoustic guitar. Right, so let's jump into operator number two and let's drag this ratio value down to zero and let's bring this up to 1.4. And we're gonna jump into the ring modulation section right here. And we're gonna have operator two ring modulate operator number one. Let's turn this up and it might look like it's grayed out, like it's not working. It doesn't work for FM, but it does indeed work for RM. So if I crank this, we can see how that's kind of pulsating as if we took it away and we brought it back. So we want this type of effect, but not nearly as much of it. So let's drop this down to 36%. We can see it kind of just breathing a little bit there. Okay. So let's jump into operator one and let's go into our volume envelope. So first things first, let's go and activate this and select tempo. And for this envelope, I want to 
I don't want to put it like a, that sharp of an attack, so I'll kind of curve it down just a little bit. So it's not as intense. And then I'll have this uh, sustain here, maybe about halfway, I think it was. No, it was like this, I think I remember. And a release down about the middle. And you can kind of see the sound's already kind of moving by itself with that ringing modulation going as well. So let's see what we have next up. We've got the plug, got our harmonics done, our volume. And oh, also, very important. So if this is kind of a stringed instrument, let's go into the pitch envelope. Let's activate this, put this at tempo. Let's click our little pencil icon, hold right click, and then delete everything. And unclick our pen and bring this middle guy up to the center. I'll snap it here just to make sure. So with this graph here, this is basically going to control the pitch of this operator right here. And in the middle is no change. On the bottom is pitching it down and on the top is pitching it up. So I'll have it start up here like that. And then I'll drag a little line down here. Because when you hit a string, it's going to go sharp or it's going to, it's going to change pitch. It's not going to oscillate at the same pitch with the second you hit it. So when you hit it, there's just a slight variation right there. We can kind of hear that little bend there. But we don't want it that strong, so instead of zooming in, trying to get even tighter down here, we can grab this pitch envelope knob and bring this down to about two, a little over 200, I think it was, something like that, 221. So it's subtle, but it'll still give us that effect that we're looking for. All right, now it sounds essentially kind of basic and bland, and that's where a lot of the effects come in to help it out. So without further ado, let's get into these effects. Let's go ahead and turn our effects knob. And with this one, we don't even really need a filter because I find EQ is more than enough for this patch. So let's bring our effects to maybe about anywhere between 75 and 80 is, is about around where this patch lives. You could change it and have less effects if you'd like to, but let's put it about 77, maybe like a, a middle ground. So let's jump into our effects tab. And let's first dive into the chorus. Let's have this order at about seven. All right, and we'll have chorus depth at about 50%. The speed's uh, 75. Oh, is this on the delay? 6%, yeah, that was fine. We didn't really touch that one. 100% for spread, minus 25. Volume all over. So yeah, so if you just change the order up to seven, you should be okay. And let's go into our first delay right here. And let's turn serial and then on. If you don't know what this button does, serial, it'll go, it'll take this delay all the way automatically into the next delay here. And then you can hit serial again to go into the next delay. So let's go into our first delay. So it's going to be a normal, and our feedback is going to be at 50%. Let's take this up to four speed. And then that should, no, offset's probably zero. And then the volume is, take this down about 20%. Don't have it so loud. And then our next delay, we're going to keep this at 3 and then have the volume also down at 20. All right, and then turn that on. So we have a little delay going there. And a lot of the magic here happens in the reverb. So let's turn this on. And we can turn on tempo if you want to, but I have some values written out over here. So you could do it on tempo. That has more to do with pre-delay stuff. So. Our low cut, let's bring this up to about 500 right there. 520, you can go a little over, it doesn't have to be exactly 500. And the high cut, I have about like 5.5, I think. It's a little higher than normal. And pre-delay, this is when you kind of want to mess around with. Uh, I found 30 is sometimes pretty good. If you go a little bit lower, it's kind of hard to distinguish the uh, individual notes. Because with pre-delay, it's basically like how long will it, will it wait until the until from an, when a note is struck until the delay effect is audible, and that's 30 milliseconds in this case. And so you can also always play around with that. Uh, room size let's take this up to about 75 percent, and the diffusion 100 percent decay. This is basically how long you want the reverb to go. It sounds cool when it's all the way up at 20 seconds, but you have to play really slow because it can get convoluted pretty pretty heavily so let's take this to 10 all right everybody here and let's take this uh dampening to what did i put three there we go 
and then the volume is about 55%. So with this in, Play it down an octave. All right, now let's brighten up the signal. Let's kind of EQ this guy a little bit. So with this one here, I have some EQ things here. You can use the outside EQ if you want to do it to your liking, but I put all these to peaking. And for the first one, uh, what was it? I had like minus 10 dB, so let's bring this down minus 10. And don't forget to enable out plus effects as well. So minus 10. And the bandwidth. What was the bandwidth? 0.5. Yeah, I think it's oh yeah, a little higher up. So 0.5. And then about three something, 300, 390, three hundred, three three to four hundred ish area. Cut out some of that like blanket over the sound. Clear it up a little bit. All right, so for the next one, uh, I have a min minus three. It's a small move here. So minus three, about there. Frequency is about 900 hertz. Let's turn this to the left a little bit there. And the bandwidth, I think, is fine at default. And then the next one is going to be plus five. Get a little of that sparkle in there. Plus five-ish. And let's get about three something K, about three, three. It's about fine here. And bandwidth, you can leave that alone. And on the other patch, I had the oversampling up at eight just to kind of hear it a little bit with more higher quality. And yeah, that's essentially this patch. It's not really that complicated, but it can sound pretty cool. If you don't want the reverb to be, if it's too much for you, you can either drag this effects, uh, effects knob to the left, drag it down a little bit if it's too much, or go into, into the effects tab itself and take down some of the room noise and the decay and kind of tune it to your liking. So I hope you guys like this video. This patch is pretty cool. I hope you guys were, are able to use it in any of your stuff like that. And yeah, if there's any kind of sounds that you guys want to hear made or not know how they're made, you can always drop them down in the comments and I'll uh, do the best to help you. So hope you uh, learned something today. Have a good day.